So I'm going to tell you a quick story. So bear with me. So on the 29th of December in 1972, a Lockheed L-1011 aircraft took off from JFK Airport, Eastern Airlines Flight 401. And in Eastern Airlines Flight 401, because this was an old wide-body aircraft, 1972, we really don't fly many L-1011s anymore, it had four crew members in the front of it. It had a pilot that had over 29,000 flight hours, had a first officer that had almost 6,000 flight hours, and two engineers that had about 14,000, 15,000 flight hours apiece. That's four trained aviation specialists, two pilots, two flight engineers in the front of that airplane. They flew from JFK to Miami-Dade. Not a bad night. Actually kind of nice out, not a significantly interesting flight. They got ready to make their approach into Miami-Dade. They did everything in their, in their uh, before landing checklist. They're going through their checklist, doing all their checks. One of the last things you do in a fixed wing airplane is you put the gear down. So they slap the handle to put the gear down. When that gear goes down, you're going to get three lights. Two for the mains, one for the nose gear. Nose gear light didn't come on. So they're on an approach into Miami-Dade, 176 people on board, 13 crew, and 163 passengers. What does the captain do? He does what he's supposed to do. Hey, approach, I need to execute the mist and go into holding. I got a problem with my landing gear. Roger that. You are cleared into holding. Head over to whatever the, the radio was. Hold it 2,000 feet over the Everglades. You can hold it 2,000 feet over the Everglades in a commercial airplane because you're not going to be bothering anybody. There's nobody out there. Just alligators and snakes, right? So they did that. Now, the interesting thing about holding over the Everglades, there's no light out there. So it's at night, 2300. So really, you're flying instruments the whole time. You can't see what's going on really below you because there's nothing to see. There's no cultural lighting down there. So they're out holding over the Everglades at 2,000 feet, working this problem on this light. Hey, what's wrong with the light? Flight engineer, go downstairs and check and see if the gear's down. You can actually walk, go downstairs, flight of steps in an L-1011, look through a little peephole and see if the gear's down a lot. So he's down there doing that. You got a 29,000 hour captain 6,000 hour first officer and a flight engineer still left in the cockpit, all three of them working this problem with the light, right? Holding it 2,000 feet over the Everglades. Somehow, and still undetermined how, the autopilot gets kicked off. The airplane starts a very slow descent. Very slow, imperceptible from the cockpit. And as they're working this problem in a matter of seconds, 10, 15, 20 seconds, the whole sequence took about 70 seconds. This airplane begins to descend. And the last thing you hear on the uh, voice cockpit recorder is, hey, what's our altitude supposed to be? And then flight 401 from Eastern Airlines hit the Everglades at 200 knots. Hit on its left side in a turn because they were making another turn into holding. Spun, dragged along the ground, killed uh, both pilots, most of the crew. 101 people killed. The only reason anybody survived is because they crashed in the Everglades because of the mud and that attenuated the crash impact. So why am I telling you this story about a commercial airliner over 50 years ago? Because your responsibility as leaders is to always fly the airplane. With all of that aviation expertise in there, and even all of the technology that was available in 1972, they forgot the number one rule. Nobody was flying the airplane. So when you hear me say, always fly the airplane, what that means to you is you've got to remember not to focus on that landing gear light because it's going to draw your attention away. It'll draw your attention away in garrison. It'll draw your attention away in training. And if you're not careful, it'll draw your attention away in combat. You've got to work the problem. You've got to understand that you are knocking down one target at a time until you get to your objective, and you can never, ever, ever quit. That's your responsibility. Always fly the airplane. Whoa.